In this video I'm going to show a new archer, my wife, how to cut her very first arrows as well as how to install components in her arrows and we'll be showing you along the way on how to do the very same thing, a few things to take into consideration, and overall probably a whole bunch of questions from her that you probably have at home that I have totally forgot about over the past and how to do, so it'll be a learning experience for everybody. Okay, so in the previous video to this, uh, we kind of have a little mini arrow building series going on for beginners, for new archers, because there's been a lot of requests for new archer related content on this channel. So my wife is a brand new archer, has basically shot not much at all. Uh, I'm on three weeks now. Yeah, three weeks basically of uh, serious shooting. <laughs> Like 30 minutes every other yeah, day. Yeah, like backyard backyard <laughs> shooting, basically. So it's been great. Uh, she's graduating from some arrows that I had basically laying around that was great for her in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And she's ready to buy her very first set of arrows. Well, we already bought them. And we selected them in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that, there'll be links in the description below. Plus, I'll put a card at the top up over there for you to reference on how to select arrow spine. So when you're ready to buy arrows, you can reference that. And today we are going to be cutting her arrows and then installing some components in the arrows. What do we have here in front of us? I believe this is an arrow saw, only because you said it about 15 well, minutes ago. It also says it right there too. It's on the label. Yeah. Um, also yeah, quickly, arrows. before we get too far, I forgot to mention, um, all the stuff that we're using in this video, with the exception of the arrow and a couple of the other tools, we'll have links in the description below on where you can grab those. This is a really affordable arrow saw, and if you're into archery or you plan on being into archery for a you know a decent period of time, it's really well worth it. Um, you know, after you're probably a half a dozen arrows, so after your sixth set of arrows, you'll pay for the arrow saw, you'll pay for the torch, you'll pay for all of the actual tools that we'll be using in this video. So if you're really interested in sticking with archery for a while, I highly recommend getting an arrow saw. They're really affordable. Uh, again, links in the description below. So, we have an arrow saw in front of us. And some arrows. arrows. <laughs> Spot, <laughs> some raw shafts. And we have uh, some knocks, which are Easton G knocks. And we've got some points from Top Hat. And we've got some veins behind us and a torch and some other things that we'll need in uh, the video itself. Basically, what we did before this video was we figured out the arrow length that we were going to be using with these the spine of arrows because we built a growth for lack of better terms into this actual system for for heather she's not growing anymore but she'll get stronger uh hopefully okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually she's already shooting like 27 pounds which is a lot for a new archer and uh she's handling it quite well so don't feel subconscious. He only Self. says that because he's my husband. No, that's not true. <laughs> I bet you a lot of people comment about how that's a lot of weight for a you know, new person. <laughs> we built in extra length into her arrows because we're going to increase her draw weight over time yeah. to be able to get her further distances. Because what was your main goal with getting a new set of arrows? Besides an, a set of arrows that actually works. Well, the other ones worked. Ish. Um, ish. <laughs> my, my main goal was to be able to shoot further distance and eventually be able to shoot like field archery or something of that nature. Yeah, so her point on meaning, so we, we've been, both been shooting bare bow mm -hmm. and string walking with the bare bows. And point on is when you're three fingers underneath the arrow, the finger touching the knock. That is the furthest distance you could possibly shoot without aiming higher above the target. And your point on distance is like... Like 25 Yeah, it's probably ish. about 25 yards, 25 meters, somewhere mm -hmm. in that range. It's changed slightly because her form and technique has changed and it's actually gotten much better. So the bow's acting a bit more efficient. So, yeah. But it's right around that 25 meter range. And in field archery, um, we shoot out to, do you know how far? 50? Yeah, we shoot out to 50 meters in field archery 
Um, so the goal would be to get her set up so her point on is 50 meters because that's what you would like to do for building that type of setup. That'd be nice. We are going with these Easton Inspires. They're a really cheap arrow. The tolerances aren't very good, but new archers miss, new archers break Can arrows. Can you remind me what the tolerance is? I forgot. Yeah, so arrow tolerances are the weight of each arrow. So each arrow in this dozen, how consistently do they weigh? Okay. And it's important because, well, it's important at a high level because a lighter arrow would hit higher on the target and a heavier arrow would hit lower on the target because our gunpowder, the bow, doesn't change. The power of the bow doesn't change, but the weight of the arrow does, the weight of the projectile. So a heavier projectile would hit lower on the mm -hmm. target. It's important for accuracy. But in the beginner stages, not really super important. Um, another tolerance setting within the arrow is straightness. So how straight is that arrow? Um, some of these aren't extremely straight. Um, some of them are pretty good. But for somebody who's new, a cheap set of arrows is way better. I mean, these are pretty much as cheap as you can get as far as an all-carbon arrow goes. I have a dumb question. Sure. These look straight to me. How do I know? So there's many ways you can actually test that. The best way would be with a point. You could eyeball them down the shaft like this, so I'll point it at the camera. This one actually looks pretty decent. But some of these arrows can be pretty crooked and have a little bit of bends in them. I can't really see them because they're pretty decent, but if you take a arrow point and you put the point in the arrow, hopefully it goes in, and then you spin it, and I can feel a huge wobble in it. But the good news is these arrows are much longer than we actually need, so we are going to be cutting them down, and when we cut them, we're going to essentially be straightening them because when you have something that's really, really long, it's really, really hard to make it very, very straight. But if you make it shorter, it's easier to make it straighter within that relative distance and length. So once we build all these, because we're actually going to be shooting indoor states uh, in a little bit. <laughs> so when we're done building all these, I know it's comical. Um, we are, we'll sit down and we'll pick her best six arrows for your tournament arrows. We'll okay. pick the six straightest arrows for you. And I only shoot you. three. Three per end at this end. tournament, yeah. <laughs> But, so, do you look right through here, okay. and when I spin it, do you see that wobble? It wobbles, yeah. yeah. Now you can spin it in your hand, and I'll you'll feel, it. here, I'll, I'll spin it, you hold it. You feel that it's wobble? It's very wobbly. Yeah. So, well, that's fun. they're not exactly straight. Not a big deal. Beginner. You know, you're gonna lose them, you're gonna miss them, you're gonna break them, you're gonna lose points in them. You're gonna have issues. So um, cheaper is always better when you're beginning because especially we're gonna be shooting field archery. She's never shot 50 meters before. And the target, the biggest target is only this big at 50 meters. You can miss and break arrows. And it would be a tragedy if we were breaking 15 to $30 arrows or $50 arrows at the highest end. Not a big deal when they're a couple bucks a piece. What we've got here and what you'll need at home for cutting your arrows and gluing in components or assembling the arrows you need an arrow saw. This arrow saw has a dust collection hood on it because we're cutting all carbon arrows. You don't want to be breathing carbon dust in. You get carbon in your hands, it doesn't ever come out because it just keeps splintering and fragmenting. It's not something, it's not good stuff. You don't want to breathe it in. Uh, there, it, within this, I believe there's also fiberglass in this arrow as well. Again, don't want to breathe that in. So we've got a cheap vacuum attached to this dust collection hood and we're going to use that. We've got a torch, just a basic propane torch with a pencil tip on it. Not the super high heat one that people use to actually assemble copper pipe together for, you know, household piping and stuff like that. You really don't need that. You need just a pencil tip. I'll have links in the description below for that. You can also use a modified or a, you know, a higher powered um, torch lighter. Those do work as well. Uh, we've got some knocks. These happen to be Easton Large Groove G knocks. She's shooting a little bit too big of a string right now, but we need large groove. We had these ones laying around. It's perfect. And then we also have uh, some of these top hat points that are made for these Inspire arrows. And the reason that I wanted to go with these, because we wanted to build her the ability to grow up and shoot more weight, right? So these arrows, or these points rather, you can see they have a lot of break-off sections on them. Not only do they have break-off sections, which are these chunks. So um, this right here in this configuration weighs 130 grains. Okay. Okay. Now, and what is a grain reference? A grain is a weight. 
It's, I know it's a weight, but I mean, is, <laughs> is that a specific measurement of weight? That uh, I, know? I, I don't, don't know what the actual conversion is, to be honest. It's very small and minute. We weigh things in grains in archery when it's talking to arrows and the projectiles because it is so finite. It's mm -hmm. so, so small. Like, this probably weighs an ounce or three quarters of an ounce. So if this weighs 130 grains or three quarters of an ounce, you can see how you can get more accurate with using grains. Sure. So this is 130 grains. Each one of these sections here are 10 grains. So this is 130. If I broke that one off, it'd be 120, 110, 100, and so on. Mm -hmm. But what's really neat about these points is that the break off section screws into the main body oh. of the point. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, probably 60 grains here and then the balance of the 70 grains is here. So we have is go, the ability to go as light as 70 grains or as high as 130, but why I like these is that if you broke these all off down to here and you realized, oh no, I broke off too many, you can buy replacement break off screw in points. That's so you can actually screw these back in and have your 130 again without ruining the point. So how do I know how much weight I need to put on my arrow? <laughs> okay, so Part of that is being familiar with shooting, and part of that is a guessing game. So in general, a heavier point will make an arrow act dynamically weaker. That means, so because when you let go of an arrow, especially when we're shooting recurve. And weak means it goes to the left? Uh, weak means the arrow is bending too much. And we'll, we'll talk about okay. where it goes, but yes, you would be correct. It actually would go to the right for you. Oh, to yeah. the right. Yeah. Just kidding. I wasn't correct at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But you're nice. <laughs> um, so why arrow point weight matters is because when you're holding onto the string, when you let it go, the bow is, or the arrow is being pushed by the string. Mm -hmm. And so it's being pushed from behind. And if you have something heavy in the front, it's going to not want to move due to inertial resistance to movement. Sure. So heavier the point weight is, the more it's going to resist moving, and this is going to be moving in the back. So what it's going to be doing is it's going to bend the arrow more mm -hmm. because the point weight's heavier. That's just a simple way to look at it. We got these because they have the most range of adjustment, and you can replace these. They're great. Um, there's many different options. There's tool steel options and regular steel. It's, it's not important, but what's important is the break-offs. We can break these off. So... We will be cutting her arrows to the length that we know she's going to need right now based on her bow weight, and then we'll probably adjust the point weight to get her arrows to tune pretty decent and start mm -hmm. from there. Once you do stop doing that, you can start adjusting your bow weight and your arrow length together. Say it right now you're shooting 27 pounds. If next week you wanted to go up to like 28 pounds or 29 pounds, we may... Hot, heat up these points, pull them out, cut the arrow shaft a quarter of an inch, glue the points back in, and your arrows mm -hmm. will still be tuned, but now you're shooting at a higher bow weight. I see. So we're going to play with this setup. We don't know exactly where it is, and I've actually kind of had a little bit of difficulty trying to figure out where would be the best place to start. Where do we go? Because there's so many different options. We don't know exactly what she's going to need. We don't know exactly what point weight we want. We don't know exactly what arrow length we want. We don't know exactly how much bow weight we want to shoot, other than right now what she's shooting is as most as we really want to shoot. But yes, we I also don't want to right go now. down. No. Yeah, we also don't want to go down because that would, you know, she won't be and getting stronger. And I'm doing stronger. okay with it. Yeah, she's doing just fine. Yeah. She's managing fine. But to go up in bow weight wouldn't be ideal. So we're going to start on the weakest end of the spectrum with the heaviest point weight we've got and the longest arrow length that we are going to need. So... Sounds good. Yeah, so we referenced the arrow chart like we did in the previous video, 27 pounds at 28 inches with a standard point weight, which is in the neighborhood of 100 grains usually, mm -hmm. is going to be perfect. These are 130 grain points, and we're going to cut them at 28 inches, so we'll probably be a little bit too weak, but we're going to be on the safe side and not cut them too short. Although I think we probably can get away with a much shorter arrow, at least we will be in the future. We're just going to start on the long end of the spectrum because, again, there's a lot of unknowns, just like you may have a lot of unknowns at home, too. So the first thing that we want to do is you always want to cut your arrows the same way or make them make notes on this, the whatever you're doing always the same. If you see here, I think you can see it. Yeah, you can't really read it because my handwriting's awful, but right here I have recurve X10s 
29 and a hair is the raw shaft length. <laughs> <laughs> 29 and a hair, you know, just a little bit more. But that was raw shaft length, like this. No pin, no knock, no nothing. In the receiver, 20, set at 29 and a teeny bit, and that's where I cut them at. But we're not gonna need to do that here. Uh, for Heather, from now on, we are going to be cutting her arrows with the knocks in. So the first thing we're gonna do is put knocks in the arrows. So why, why do you cut them without the knocks in, and why would we cut mine with the knocks in? The reason that mine have, I've been cutting mine with raw shafts is because I have just, that's the measurement system I have had. I have shot the same arrow length since 2009. So <laughs> since 2009, my arrows just happen to be that length and knocks change over the years. So I wrote this I down see. because, so these knocks here. So well, if, if knocks change, wouldn't it be advisable to just do the shaft rather than the knocks? Yeah. And then you don't have to always adjust you, you for can, the knock size? You can, but when, if you, when we're referencing the arrow chart, when you're looking at the length that they're referencing, they're talking about from the groove of the knock I see. to the end of the shaft where the point starts. So it would make it easier for referencing. Yes. That so because if I hold this here and I do a measurement, the from the groove of the knock to the end of the where the arrow shafts would start it's in the neighborhood of uh like five sixteenths or so give or take so we got to add five sixteenths to the measurement and this and that so it's easier whereas i think if i hold this in here that's pretty close the groove of the knock is pretty close to this flat surface here because you can see there's a recessed area that the arrow sits inside of when we get it set up we'll try to make it as less complicated as possible but because back when I was doing this, I was switching between biter knocks and regular knocks mm -hmm. and, and the ear length. The ears are these pieces that stick out past the groove here. So the ear length and all those knocks change. Oh. The length changes. I see. So it was easier for me to just cut the raw shafts. Right. So we'll start with this. So what you want to do, I'll do one, you can do the rest. So not every set of knocks will come with a knock installing tool. This one just happened to because it's a hundred bag of knocks, a hundred knocks. And it's a nice little tool. It holds the knock like this. And so you can put some force into it without bending the knock. <laughs> <laughs> so I always like to get it started in the shaft first before really seating it. But all I'm doing is you just pretty much line it up with the shaft and make sure that you're not putting it in crooked because mm -hmm. you can either bend the knock or you can crack the shaft sure. and you don't want to do that. So I'm just going to get it started. It's going to slip in and then set it in like that and just kind of twist it and push it in until it's seated flush with the shaft. It looks like you're putting a pretty good amount of force. Oh yeah, it's not easy. You gotta put it in there. So one thing that my uh, shop that I grew up in did is they cut these ears off and they drilled a hole in the in a shelf in their shop and glued it into the wall. So that then they were sense. pushing the arrow into it. So it might be easier for new people to be doing it like this, but the one thing that I can say, uh, personal experience, I did that, and then I broke the knock in the back of the shaft at the same time because I was pushing so hard and it slipped and I broke an arrow. So you don't want to do that. I, you know, just take your time and be as gentle as possible. Does it matter what side the knock goes in? Yes. Well, most arrows, it doesn't matter, but what you want to do is put all the labels back towards the knock end. So Why you'll that? see that the label is off center. Because if it was this way, and we were to start cutting your arrows this way, the air label would start to disappear. Generally, they're built with the, they're always built with the label back towards the knock. They're never with the label in the center of the shaft. Okay. Some arrow shafts are very important to cut them only from the front. Um, some, in the past, were on, very important to only cut them from the back. Like, there are many different ways that you can cut arrows. There are very advanced ways that we would be cutting these arrows if we were, you were going to go to the Olympics with shooting these arrows, but you wouldn't be shooting them anyway. We'd be shooting better arrows than this. Like in Easton X10, you only cut from the front. Don't cut from the back. You can if you want, but you only cut from the front. All right. Uh, same with these. We're just going to cut from the front because there is no real limit to cutting from what the front. What about the people shooting like the Carbon Express or some, I don't know what the Pretty popular much arrows are. Any but... arrow out there, you got to you read the... Not all of them will come with manuals, but at least in the description of the arrow on their chart, on their online or somewhere, it'll say where to cut from or where it can be cut from. Great. The default is just cut from the front. Okay. Always. 
So go ahead and install your Nox. While she's doing that, if you're doing this for the very first time and you want all your arrows to look the same, which is not important, but if your arrows were already fletched by now, um, <laughs> you would want to pay attention to the knock itself. And you'll see on this knock here, if I can get it to focus, um, on this knock, you see that little ear there on the corner? That ear there, and then on this side, it's not there, that little mark. So you would want to put those always to the same direction. When we fletch our arrows later, or fletch her arrows later, we'll make sure that this knock indicator is in the same place for every single arrow. Having trouble. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I tried that, but I didn't want to break it like you did. It's okay if you Perfect. twist it. <laughs> you can twist it, you can not twist it. It's up okay. to you. Some are tighter than others. It's always better to have a bit of a snugger fit because um, they're going to stay in there and they're not going to fall out. I've had some that they don't want to stay in and they fall out because they are just a little bit undersized, meaning the knocks are a little bit too small. Don't be afraid to push on that. Yeah, just hold it down towards the knock. So if you're going to have to do it like she's doing it, you want to grab it as close to the base of the knock as possible. All right, you can start them and I can finish them. <laughs> So what happens if somebody's having the similar problem that I'm having and can't get these in by themselves? How do they... I guess you just... Yeah, um... That's where I think mounting it on the wall. Like, this, it's actually more difficult to set them in like this compared to pushing it well, against the wall. Well, if you pushed it in, that wall. would be much easier. Yeah, pushing it against the wall is definitely a lot easier. Um, it's, it's tricky, you know, and that's where getting the, this little simple tool, if it doesn't come with the knocks that you've ordered, it's, I, I don't know if they even sell them by themselves, but it would be smart to have these around. Uh, some multi-tools have them built in. Some higher end knock companies, you can buy them separately for installing them and actually removing knocks, like the biter knock tool. It's actually pretty nice. Otherwise, if we were to take it and push it on a table like this, the ears would bend. Yeah. So is that why you oil them sometimes? <laughs> pin knocks. Pin knocks are a different story. If pin knocks are difficult to get in, I would take them. The trick was always to, you know, if you're sweating, you just kind of use some of the oils that are on your face and it goes right in. It's gross, but it works. <laughs> the first time I saw you do that, I'm like, what on earth does it keep doing? Well, it's a pro tip. You know, you're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so now we have her knocks installed and they're all installed in the same side. All the labels are in the same place. So now what you want to do is we're going to... So what happens if somebody doesn't have one of these? You can't cut arrows. Oh, so I you mean, can't just use like a saw? No, absolutely. I guess I, that should be a disclaimer in this video. Do not use the little tools that you can buy as arrow cutters that are nothing more than either brake line cutters or uh, copper pipe tubing cutters. And they basically have a roller with a pinch blade basically. And you, you tighten it until it touches it. You spin it around the shaft a few times. You give it another crank. You turn it, crank and crank. You're fracturing the end of the shaft. Oh. And you don't want a carbon arrow to blow up on you, especially while shooting them. If you look closely um, on this arrow, it says uh, B4, Check before, see warnings in use, and it be safe. There's a whole hotline specifically for carbon arrows because carbon arrows are pretty dangerous if you don't cut them right. Okay. Because they can fracture and break and you don't want splinters in your arms. Trust me. The only way to really do it is with a high-speed cutoff saw. That's what this is. It's nothing more than a thin blade, a thin mason, not a masonry blade, but it's like a, it's a cutoff wheel that you would use to cut metal or cut whatever. And it's spinning at uh, 8,000 RPMs. So it's spinning very fast and it's cutting it very smooth and very nice, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't want to use like a, like a hacksaw. You'll just shred it. You don't do that. You have to use an arrow saw. It's really the only way to go. It's absolutely the only way I would recommend doing it. Now, I have seen people creative with Dremel tools uh, making a jig. You can do that-ish, but I wouldn't. I would still just get an arrow saw. It's worth it. It's repeatable. It's accurate. It's cheap. I mean, it's, I think it's like 200 something bucks, meat. 
I think two, two to three hundred bucks somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's only cheap if you're in it for yeah, longevity. If, if you're going to be in it for a long term, do that. If not, there are places you can buy arrows cut to length online. You can go to your local shop and say cut them this length. They're going to charge you shop rate and stuff like that. Um, but if you're into archery and you're going to stick with it for a while, you know, even just band together with a bunch of your buddies and friends and get one and pile your money in. You know, you get half a dozen people together or three, four people together and you'll have one for less than 50 bucks a person. I think it'd be really, really worth it to do that. So this saw, it's pretty self-explanatory the way it's set up. Um, there's a depth gauge and all sorts of stuff and, and a guard and a shroud and things. Um, it's all pre-set up. We'll get that focused again. It's all pre-set up um, basically from the factory. You can adjust the depth. It's already set. It's not super important um, to have it perfect. It's just you want the blade to just intersect the outside wall. Outside wall. You don't you do not want to, if this is the shaft, you don't want the blade to cut the whole end off like this. You want the blade to just cut the one wall and then you rotate it to cut oh, it. It's so more it accurate splinter. that way. It doesn't splinter, and that way you're cutting into the shaft because the way the blade rotates, it'll cut and push the splinters into the inside of the shaft instead of this way, it peels off the bottom and pushes the top in. So don't do that. You want it to just intersect one wall of the actual shaft. So now what you want to do is you want to loosen this wing nut, and uh, I did it just <laughs> Thanks in Thanks for case. dragging it yeah. for me. And slide it up to 28 which is 28 inches. Wait, didn't you say we were Snug supposed to do plus one inch? Or was that only when we were deciding? That, that we were deciding to pick your arrows. We said plus one inch because uh, For we, the chart. your ideal length would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 27, maybe 26 and a half. And so we said, all right, we're going to go to 28 instead because that's an extra inch. So we can build that one extra inch of length in to eventually go up in draw weight as we shorten those mm -hmm. arrows to still have a good tune. Okay, so we're at 28 inches, and these arrows will cut be cut about an inch, an inch and a half or so. So something to take into consideration is the depth of this offset. Now, it depends on how you set your bow scale up. I bought mine with the tape not on it. I believe I set the tape up from the actual blade to inside the knock receiver length. Yes, I did. The way that if if you're buying your saw brand new, the way that I set this mark up here is from the blade where the arrow shaft would be to where the knock would sit. And you can see it's 28 inches perfect. Now, it's not 28 inches to this surface, it's 28 inches to that surface, to the surface that the knock actually sits on. So the way that this is actually set up we're setting it up to 28 inches back at the back of the knock. It's not what we want. We want 28 inches to the groove of the knock. So we'll take a knock and hold it up to the scale and see how long from the groove of the, of the knock to the end of the ears it is. So she is measuring from down here in the groove of the knock to the top of these ears here because the way that I have the bow scale set up, it's measuring to this surface when the knock is actually pushing against it. So it's important to take note into the consideration of the difference from the groove of the knock to the end of the ears. So I think it's 516. Okay, so now what you want to do is take the actual thing and move it back that way, 5 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so we've got it set at 28 and 5 sixteenths, which takes into consideration the 5 sixteenths of the lengths for the actual ears of the knock. So now we're ready to cut the arrows. And we will be running a vacuum at the same time we're running an arrow saw. So I'm going to tell her how to do it and tell you guys how to do it too before the actual arrow saw gets turned on and before the vacuum gets turned on because it's relatively loud. So what you want to do is when you're cutting the arrows is you always want to have force in against the knock receiver like that. And it has to always sit so you're always pushing force into it. Okay. But then you want to take your two hands and you want to be able to spin the arrow as you are slowly pushing it into the saw. So I don't go plunge directly deep into the full depth of the shaft and then rotate. I am rotating as I am pushing it against the saw blade. Now this is a very cheap saw. It's v not very powerful. It's kind of actually underpowered and some of the reviews reflect that. It's only underpowered if you're a shop and you're really trying to cut hundreds of dozens of arrows 
when it's like this and you have time and you have the ability, you just take your time and go slow. So you'll hear that the saw will load up and it will actually slow down if you go too fast. So you'll hear the RPMs drop a lot and you'll hear it kind of chug along a little bit. You want to let that saw blade keep its speed up. So just slowly rotating and slowly pushing the pressure in, you'll eventually see the arrow chunk drop off and then you continue to spin it for like one extra rotation so then it cleans up the end of the arrow shaft nice and square. All right? Sounds good. So I'll do one so you guys can see. Good idea. She can see, and then she'll cut the rest of the arrow shafts. It's really not that difficult. It's a little intimidating because we're cutting arrows and you can't glue the arrows back together. Mm -mm. That's why we're starting longer than we will probably need so that way we can slowly cut them up back to make sure. Now, I'm really comfortable with this, so we're gonna cut all dozen arrows right now. At home, you might wanna only cut two, one for a flat shaft and one for a bare shaft, and go and try and see if the tune is relatively close. If not, you can, you've can you only lost two arrows out of those 10 if you needed them actually longer. I've seen it happen. I wouldn't recommend if you're new to this to cut all of them right away, unless you're not interested in bare shaft tuning, and it may not be to your level yet. For her, she's at that level and she has me to help her guide through this, so she'll be able to do it no problem. So you'll hear the arrow saw and it takes a little while to spin up. So you're good, you wanna keep it at that higher speed. So something that I'm noticing with these arrows, um, because Easton advertises that the release agent on the inside or the, there's basically a little thing, a liner that they put over the mandrel. This is getting way too above for this section, but I just want you to know that these arrows are loading up this arrow saw more than normal because of the design of the arrow itself. Inside of the arrow, the inner liner is a really like soft material that is slowing down the saw blade a lot. So normally you won't hear that. Um, we can get more in depth into that in another video. If, if people are more advanced, um, you can check out some of the other arrow building videos I've done. But just know that this arrow saw is loading up because of the liner in the arrow. Okay, so do you wanna see how it feels first before I turn it on? Yes. And so I would support it more towards the saw. Don't be afraid of it. There's a guard and a shroud. Uh, just don't stand and look at the blade like this because if the blade were to grenade, it can throw shrapnel at you. So where she's sitting and where I'm sitting, because I'm off center, uh, we're both safe. So and, why did okay. you put your hands underneath and that one under over? It doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter? It's just I was, that's how I was comfortable. Okay. So yeah, you just want to keep it rotating, keep it spinning, and then just slowly go in. So can I mess this up? You, the only way that you can mess it up is if I mean, you don't keep the pressure tension? that way. Yeah, okay. that's really the only way is, is how to mess it up. And so after the arrow thing drops off, because of the design of these, give it an extra couple rotations, but really okay. make sure you're keeping that pressure that way. That's how you cut arrows. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It was a little tricky with this uh, particular arrow because of the liner that's in it for whatever reason. It's just very thick and flexible. 
So it kind of bogs down the saw a bit and that's not normal to see, uh, but we did today. So now next step would be to prep the arrow shafts for gluing the actual components in. I think that we're actually gonna, or I think that I'm actually gonna break that this video off now and do the arrow point gluing in in a different video that will be released very shortly after this one. So uh, if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you're notified when we do upload those videos. We're gonna continue to follow this progress through the end, gluing in components and tuning and setting everything up for her. And uh, we'll try to continue to keep beginner stuff in it. Uh, but before we sign off on this one, do you have any questions about cutting arrows? No, that was great. No, we actually covered stuff. You don't yeah. have to. We don't have to start over again. Not this time. <laughs> Good because we can't glue the arrows back together. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get into prepping the shafts and gluing the components in, and I'll have that video released in the next couple days. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.